So now the party is at a crossroad. What should be done? Well, thank you. I'm happy that in your introduction you did acknowledge that I'm a journalist who is also privileged to be playing in the operating in the uh, political arena. And that means I have the liberty to be able to speak from these two perspectives. First, as a journalist, let me say that I'm very much disappointed in the media. And why do I say so? By my basic knowledge as a mass communicator and as somebody who is trained in the business of um, uh, bringing news to members of the public, I was taught that one of the very uh, functions of the mass media is the issue of uh, molding public opinion or in other words uh, trying as much as possible to set the agenda but what I've seen in the last couple of months and possibly even more than a year is that the media in our country have been so concerned about the propagation of the agenda set by the political class and what is that agenda the discussion that circles around zoning. And I ask myself, when an individual is sick and he proceeds to a hospital, and the moment he gets there, having obtained the hospital card and possibly gone through the vital checks, and then they, he approaches a doctor. I have not seen an individual who asks the doctor, please, do I, I want to know your tribe, the religion you profess before submitting himself to the treatment or the prescription of that doctor. The individual first believed that this doctor had been trained in the business of treatment of amens, and as such, psychologically, he's healed first that he's before a medical doctor. Secondly, a good, a good number of Nigerians fly in the air, which is about the highest risk that anybody can take. If you have a bad leader, somehow along the line, you can decide to even go on asylum to another country. But when you are in the air, being flown by a pilot, no matter the turbulence, you cannot ask the pilot, please stop, let me jump out. So in which case, at that moment, you are left at the mercy of God's protection and whatever that pilot can do with that particular instrument, the aeroplane. Yet, when we board the plane, we don't ask, where is this pilot from? We board the plane believing that the pilot has been trained and certified to be able to fly that particular instrument and in which case he can take us from point A to point B. And we jump into the flight, sit down comfortably, sometimes even have some uh, refreshments, gist, uh, laugh at each other, and even some persons get busy conducting one business or the other while in the air. Why is it that when it comes to the issue of our country, where we do recognize that there are problems, just like the man who is sick and who needed medical attention, and who understands that if you are having running stomach, there are prescriptions, there are drugs that you need to take to be able to arrest that particular ugly development so that you have the time to concentrate. We're able to see that our country today is suffering from the issues of insecurity. Our country today is suffering from a very high level division where the man in the south and the man in the south find it very difficult to trust them uh, trust each other our country today is the suffering from the man in the north yeah the man in the south and the man in the north where our country today our economy is at its lowest ebb nobody is discussing how to cure these different ailments that have become the abattoirs that has kept us where we are today and just like that patient who approaches the doctor and submits himself irrespective of where the doctor is from, the Nigerian media, I expect, should be able to take Nigerians back to how we can take ourselves to that doctor who can treat us. The good thing is that that doctor can be found both in the south and in the north. We have been preoccupied with the issue of zoning. Let it come from the south. Let it come from the north. Nobody is talking about the real amen that is disturbing us today. Amen of insecurity. Amen of bad economy. Amen of division in our country. Amen of lack of trust in our country. Yet, we are so comfortable on daily basis. Leaders who may find it difficult to emerge in their small corner are very busy shouting, zoning, zoning, zoning. And nobody has been able to say, what is this amen of this patient? that we need to treat. So that let us begin to look for that doctor that has the capability. 
not to treat it. Not minding where the doctor is from. Not minding where the doctor is from. Because let me tell you, Buhari has been the president of Nigeria at least up to the, almost about seven years now. Can you say that the people of Kasina have enjoyed equity if Zoni represents equity? In 2015, I have a fair knowledge of what this country looked like because I was also involved at a certain level, particularly as a media practitioner. The people in Kasina had better life in 2015 than they have now. How can Buhari's presidency become equity for such persons? And who told you that there are no zombies also in the South? Who possibly, when they become, after all, there was once upon a time, a governor in this state, particularly in the, in the southern state, who was very busy molding everything moldable. To the extent that even in the southeast, when you get to certain, when you wake up in the morning, instead of individual says it's on a salary, they say Abwalagi, which means have they molded you? It meant that at that moment, that person didn't know the needs of the people of his state. I am not going to be in a position to begin to say, don't come to the south or don't remain in the north. I want a president who will be a president of Nigeria, not a zonal president or a regional president. You know what Zoni has done to, to us? It makes us to begin to look at, well, let, let it be my brother, let it be my brother. And yet your brother comes and life becomes worse. In 2015, majority of the people in the, in the north felt that there was a, this was the time for the north to produce a president. Even when they knew ab initio that Jonathan Goodluck, the president of Nigeria at that, at that time, and the candidate of the PDP, was by every stretch of imagination better than the candidate of the APC. The issue was, no, the south has had it for a long time. Let's go to the north. I have gone to the north for seven years. Life has become worse for average Nigerian because we stayed with zoning. Are you talking the same? about zoning generally in Nigeria or you're looking at the political party? I am talking about whether in Nigeria or political party. Anytime you talk about this zoning, people just make it look as if that represents equity. Zoning does not represent equity. Because if you, become, if you give a president to my brother and I'm feeling very fine because my brother is in charge, and my neighbor is not feeling very fine. How can that be equity? That is my own selfishness. And in some instances, that my brother can even be president yet, I'm not even able to see Gary to soak, let alone eat wonderful eba. I just told you earlier that Buhari's presidency has not in any way improved the quality of life of the people in Kasina. Will it not be better for me that even a Buhari, Buhari son returns as president and is able to develop everywhere and is able to give everybody a fair share? For me, equity means that a president who is the president of Nigeria is able to recognize that the man in Kara Namuda deserves what God has given to us as a country. Okay. That the man in uh, very close to Bakasi, in Cross River, either is in Obubura or is in um, uh, Ekom, deserves good life. Or that the man in, in um, Sokoto, or in a um, Tambua community, is also able to enjoy the good life irrespective of what that present is from. When we continue this zoning debates, we make it look as if our problem is about where the president comes from. That's not our problem. Our problem is somebody who would come behave like a doctor, who is able to understand that I have running stomach, and is able to arrest that particular ugly development. And at the end of the day, I can see that comfortably not the being the top, but the running to more. But hold on, because if you're saying this, that means you want to jettison what the political party constitution is saying. Uh, the PDP constitution is saying... If it is not working right, if it is not working right, it is not working right, no, no, Ijoma. No, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Because in that same constitution, in, that, in the section where the zoning thing was mentioned, mm. it wasn't, it, it, there, there was nothing, there, there's nothing like South or North in it. Mm. But three key points. It said equity, fairness and justice. Mm. There shall be zoned across equity, fairness and justice. What represents equity? Is it where the president from that represents equity? Or what the president does with his power? That your brother becomes the president, if your brother is the doctor. Is it that your brother is a doctor that matters or that your brother is able to give you the right injection so that you are not sick tomorrow or that you are cured of the amen that but is stopping you? we have the country where we have diverse culture, religion... It is because also, of the failure of our people, failure of leaders that makes people to think that it must be your brother. And if, if you what is important, what is important, what is important, Ijoma, is that we have a country that is sick, just like a sick patient. And all we need is a medical doctor who can afford to cure us. In 1999, except you have forgotten, Obasanjo ran the election along the side of the, the path, lights of Lirimi from the north. Mm -hmm. Obasanjo from the south. Jim um, Ikweme from the east. 
was the, was the door not thrown open to everybody. You may want to say that is the beginning. In 2003, when Obasanjo was a, already a president, Atiku almost wanted to run until certain forces prevailed on him not to challenge his boss. But you recall the issue of Gemade, Rimi, mm. Obasanjo, yes. Obasanjo, yes. Obasanjo by uh, Tommy Kimi. Tommy Kimi yes. Was uh, Rimi from the south? Was he not of the same PDP? If we proceed to 20, uh, 2007, Odili of Rivers was almost in front of the whole thing until Obasanjo felt that there was a need to do some movement before Yadua came up. Yadua was not a sole candidate. There were a number of persons who also contested against him. In 2011, when Jonathan contested, Atiku Abubakar was also in that race, yes. was from the north. Was the, was the door closed? In 2015, even when Jonathan was also in power, he also ran and Atiku and others came up until they got angry and then they left and moved into the APC. In 2019, Atiku did not run alone. There were other persons that were also involved in that primary. Yes. Why are we making it look as if the door has ever been closed? It is true that people may just want to sound sentimental. I am from the South. But I want to first of all think as a Nigerian. My problem is not about a certain president who may just come and then decide to do what suits him and then leave our country continue to bleed. The issue at stake is that Nigerians, particularly the media that I'm angry, my colleagues in the media, should take us back to the need for us to have a doctor that can afford to cure the amen that is troubling us today. And I have mentioned the, that amen, the, the amens earlier. The issues of insecurity, which has ravaged our country. The issues of division, to the extent that the northern man doesn't want to even see the southern man. The issue of economy, which is very, very terrible today, to the extent that today that we are the poverty capital of the world. The last seven years have been very, very traumatizing for the average Nigerian, who is not even involved in this debate of whether to go to south or go to the north. Those of us who are in the political arena, political class, get so selfish and forget about the average Nigerian. And when we talk, hey, go to the south, go to the north, we are not thinking about how do we provide job for that average Nigerian who doesn't have a job. We are not thinking about how do we secure them so that when they sit down, they can afford not only to sleep with their two eyes closed, they can also afford to eat and have, have a privilege to drop the cup of water that they may have used to push down whatever uh, they have eaten. But just say, no, it is the son of the son. It's, at the end of the day, the day we accept what the amen is. What are we looking for today, Ijoma, ahead of 2023? We are looking for a medical doctor that will cure us of this amen of insecurity. That's what we are looking for. I want people to bring the debate around this issue of that medical doctor that can kill us and heal us. So that at the end of the day, I can afford to sit down anywhere I want to sit down and just like we enjoy in Asaba, the capital of Delta, and most places in Delta, where there's a whole lot of uh, security and a wonderful atmosphere on account of the, the uh, contributions of Okowa to the administration of Delta. That's what I want to see in Nigeria. Even before, I think like it's your mother is not very true. No, even the, even the people in the north, I'll give you an instance. Now. The abuse. people in the north are also giving you statistics of how many persons that have ruled from the south. I'm talking about the governors. Not it's not just about governors, we're talking about the political class. We're talking about the political class. There are individuals who have also come to begin to give you statistics, say, how many years that the south was in charge and how many years did not. Seen that. What has that statistics given to us? Are we looking at statistics of where you are from? Do you know what? Let me tell you the way I reason. I just believe that even if a father and son is the president and the vice president, let them go and govern well. It's not my business. If they govern well that my people are people can get job, if they govern well that our people can be secured, if they govern well that we can trust one another. In America, nobody cares whether your president is from a state A or state B. Nobody cares. The only time they care sometimes, okay, maybe when you come in, this medicine can help us also get some vote. Not for the purpose of if you are doing balancing of a south and north. People may try to make it look as if it's only in Nigeria that you have different ethnic groups. And as such, you say you call it equity, that you want to now bring all ethnic groups for the purpose of equity. You forget that almighty America had different ethnic and tribal groups. The Red Indians are there. The Aborigines of Australia are there. Some persons from also uh, uh, Europe and Germans, all of them converge there. The blacks are all there. When you come, when you go to, when you, even when you go to Canada, you will see the French, they are there. Okay, Mr. Yes. When you take a look at these nations yes. that you have mentioned, yes. 
and you come to the progresses that they are making has nothing to do with zoning. Do they have the challenge of injustice? The challenge of injustice. Then, if 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 our problem is challenge of injustice, you cannot address injustice by issue of your brother becoming the president. If that's what you think, I gave you example of Buhari. Life has become worse for the average man in Katsina in the last seven years than it was under Jonathan and Obasanjo, who were Saturnans. You remember the issue of Almajiri schools? Jonathan administration felt that there was the need to be able to bring up our brothers who were on the street and make them get them educated. What is the story of that Almajiri school today? So why do you think that it's only when your brother is the president that life is going to be better? And even if life becomes better for you, why don't you want to care about that, your brother? I have a very good friend, a very senior friend at that, Gosu Lapabio. He says, you think that you want to send your children to the best of schools and care less about the children of other people. Mm. That what you are doing is that you are training your children to be attacked by the armed robbers that you are not going to train. Because when your children grow up, they will no longer be their driver. They will take drivers from those ones you did not train. And those ones may become the armed robbers that will attack those your children you think you have trained. That is where we find ourselves today. A number of persons that have not been trained, that have not been schooled, have you seen a colony, let me use that word, a colony of Almajiri? Have you seen why some for our brothers from the north who, are, who are, have been denied the good things of life? Congregating in an area, they cannot afford to even rent houses. They just build one small butter, which was just very yeah. uh, touchy roof, just stay under. Hundreds of them. Yeah. In the worst human condition. What is equity for those kind of persons? Do they not deserve to live a good life? Why do you think that when a certain man or another man becomes president, that means you have equity? Is equity the man that occupies the position or equity is as to what he gives to everybody? For me, equity is about delivering the goods so that at the end of the day, I am comfortable in my corner, you are comfortable in your corner, and when we meet, we are comfortable together. Equity is not about where the man comes from, just like the man who flies you in an aeroplane. You have never seen anybody who enters as soon as he boards. He says, please, uh, hold on, hey, hostess, I want to see who, who is your pilot. Let me see whether that pilot is a fair man or a black man. Or let me know whether that pilot is an Igbo man or an Aosa man. He just jumps, he jumps into the flight, he balances, he asks them, please, give me drink, give me champagne. He's traveling for more than six hours to Europe. He doesn't know who is flying him because he trusts that that pilot has been trained and certified to operate the instrument that he is using, in this case, the aeroplane. And comfortably, he sits down in the air, very, very far. Me, ordinary to climb one small tree. Ordinary one small tree, the man will be scared that if he falls, he's going to break his leg. The same man climbs into an aeroplane. The aeroplane takes you up to 37 feet above the sea level, where he is not even able to see what is on the ground. And yet, the same man is comfortable flying because he has confidence in the pilot. The same way you go to the hospital and you complain of an ailment because they told you that this man is an orthopedic surgeon. And when you submit your leg that is disturbing you because you may have some form of a, a fracture, you balance and believe that that man is going to cure you. You don't ask him, please, are you a Muslim? Are you a Christian? Are you an evil man before you touch my body? Nigeria is like that patient. Very, very sick. Very, very, very sick. At the moment, Nigeria is under, is, on, is taking oxygen. But who, who is to be blamed? Because in this, in this uh, statement you have done, we are It's because all of us are chasing shadows. Are, are you saying all of us are the political All of us, not the political class. The media started by blaming the media. The, the media has a responsibility to reverse this. Disease, who gave Nigeria this disease? No, 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 no. no, no, no now, let us, now, now we, we have a responsibility to tell them that no, our problem is this and this is what we need to do to solve it. Okay, what we need me, to do me, to solve it is to first of all understand who can afford to deal with these amens. Yes. Economic amens, insecurity amens, lack of harmony amens, lack of unity amens. Who has the capacity to deal with it? And you know how you can identify who can have the capacity to deal with it? Go and look at their pedigree. Right. Look at where they are coming from. Mr. Yedu. Not those who, who not those who are owing, who don't who don't even know how to run businesses. We, those, always, those, the, we uh, hear this from politicians every day. Ijoma, let in the last media, let me let me I want to I be a little to, selfish. I no, I want to be a little selfish. Seven to years ago, yeah. seven years ago, you know that when you hear of Delta, for instance, my boss didn't tell me he wants to run for president, but I'm saying that you can see people like him. There are no good number of them across the country, not just him. In the last seven years, when you hear of Delta, you hear of Delta for the wrong reason. 
uh, uh, one fight here, another fight there. What did the man do? He didn't spread money on the street. He realized that there is a need for you to take development to also the creeks. Okay. That's equity. He doesn't have to come from Ugulaha to give them road. He does not need to belong to Okerenkoko to give them road. He doesn't need to belong to Burutu to give them load, a road, uh, an internal road. If he had come and said, no, I'm from Delta North, everything, I'll let me, this my turn. He will be having that same problem. Delta today would have been also very, very hot. Today is one of the peace, most peaceful states in Nigeria. Maybe you have forgotten. That's my you, state. Yes, you also recall when Peter B came in Anambra, the kind of crisis that he inherited, though Ngigi tried to do some other things before that time. Why am I mentioning some names? There are also other, number of other persons like them across the country. Nigerians should look for Nigerians should look for such kind of persons. You know what I'm thinking? So that they can come Mr. and solve our problems. Yes, Mr. Edu, we need we need people, we need mm. leaders that can reason Nigeria mm. and take a look at what is happening in the That country. cannot be found in zoning. But, but that on. cannot be found in the zoning debate. Hold on. This zoning debate is not our problem mm. in this country, mm. just like you said. So but why are you people allowing it to why is the media why is the that, media that is allowing it to occupy to. so much space? Let where, the media tell us our amen and the is, doctor we that need. That is where I am going to. Okay. When the when the media begin to bring that to your ailment, mm. the cause of that ailment, mm -hmm. and the doctors that you need, yes, the politic the political class or the politicians, you take will, them back. We take a take the corner and start blaming the media. No 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 there no. no. What do they use in blaming no, the media? They use the media to blame the media. I'm sure you are aware of the latest covering the cops. Yes. You are aware of the latest. Yes. As it stands now, there is a, 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 a lineup of court, uh, uh, court pronouncements yes. that you can cover certain, certain um, proceedings, corruption cases, some of them, and some high powered cases. You can cover. You have to rely on second third parties. Now, what has now, the media done? Like, what has the media done like using the law? The media, first, of all, the media first of all, media section 22 of the Nigerian Constitution. Best in the media the power to hold government accountable to the people. That is the point. How the have you used how have you utilized that session? You, now you're talking this way. Uh, yeah. Because you, you feel that the media is concentrating too much on zoning. Yes. And they should concentrate You are allowing the having, politicians to keep us there. Having the politicians come mm. out to tell us who do we need at this time? The caliber of men that are that are throwing their heart into the wind. Mm. Who are they? Are they people that are ready to take Nigeria away from this dungeon? That, that's what you the, want. They challenge. The they challenge. They, cha they challenge. One, yeah. one high-powered yeah. politician comes. To what, what makes him high-powered? What makes him high-powered? We know. We know them. Not him. What is the media that makes him high-powered? Oh, exactly. But they, when you make them as the media, yeah. they want to bring you down. So you just have. Do you know that next to God, in terms of taking people up and bringing them down, is the media? So you're saying the media is not. Next their to power. God, in they're terms of, in the case of God, is even spiritual. We what cannot even. We, God, God may not. God may not even be interested in bringing you down. The media has the power to take you up, and at the same time, if you mess up, they will just dash you on the ground. You know. By the time they know that what you're doing is so is long as so long as what you are doing is that you are doing it in the interest of the country, mm -hmm. not because you hate the man. And the political Otherwise, class that will also be selfish. You you know, it's, 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 Whether they say it first of all, what are you holding in your hand? Ijoma, let me tell you, this country belongs to all of us. Who? Whether you are a president, a governor, a minister, or anybody, you be even a commissioner, this country belongs to all of us, including that man who cannot feed. What God has given to us is so that if we manage it properly, we should be able to cater for a number of persons. Today, we are only potentially rich because we have not been able to take steps to harness those things that God has given to us, including human resources. You recall when our, president, our dear President Buhari was coming. Some persons got so ridiculous and so sentimental, and they said, even if it's Nepal B, that the certificate, it doesn't matter. I'm sure today it matters to them. Oh. What I'm trying to say is that we should take away the sentiments. If my brother is not going to be that doctor that can cure all the disease, I say quack. Does not understand how to even diagnose the patient. You go the other way. I should be able to say, bros, this sickness pass you. Yeah. May you enter one corner. And I say, look, that doctor there, see him. Na full ani, na full But this doctor, they don't train them. He go fi give me medicine when go make me well. So that's what you should take out. My dear, that's what we need. Otherwise, do I just shock you? Let us assume our brothers in the north say it's true. Let us zone, and then they zone to the south, and then one zombie picks up the ticket and decide to zombie us for the next eight years, 
And then the people did not say, ah, it's our turn, no. And then every good person in the south will still keep quiet because it's no longer their turn. Mm. And then he goes to another person. How much progress are we? Who are we copying? So we should, we should there are, see, policy. you can't, we can't reinvent the wheel. The democracy we are practicing, <laughs> we are not the one that invented it. Even if we have our own traditional way of uh, democratizing issues. In Canada, are they doing zoning the way we are doing it? In Great Britain, are they doing zoning the way we are doing it? In the United States, are they doing zoning the way we are doing it? If these guys are not doing zoning and they are making progress and they look for the people who can, how do you go to India, according to my very good friend, uh, Professor Lumumba, and import a tuk-tuk? It's a particular kind of vehicle there. And you come and you sit back and want it to perform like a Mercedes-Benz. It's not going to happen. If you want a vehicle to perform, go and get that kind of vehicle. So your advice now is that the media should change. What I'm saying, the, the media should ask people, what, let them come and tell us what's the problem of Nigeria, how do you want to solve it? Okay. If the man from the north comes, okay, welcome, sir. What do you think is the problem of Nigeria? Let us know whether he even understands it. Okay, now that we know that you, maybe you tend to understand it, now let us also see whether you know what it takes. Because it's one thing, you know, sometimes you can even see somebody's ailment, but you may not understand what to give the person. Because for instance, now, you may see a madman. You know, it's easy, it's easy to just say, I know that man is mad. So which means you understand what's wrong with the man. So how do because by the time the man just stops more more time, he just pick one leaf, he put it in his mouth, and then take one uh, urine, urinate, and put it You don't need more to tell he's mad. He's a psychiatric patient. He will have been able to, from a distance, diagnose his uh, issue. But the issue, another problem is, do you know what to give him now so that he will no longer drink his urine? Or so that he will no longer take leaves as if he's a goat and begin to eat it? So after you have told us our problem, because possible somebody explained to you, it's okay, you know, we have insecurity because you see it. We are, we are divided, yes, you see it. Our economy is bad, yes, you see it. We are the headquarter of uh, poverty and everything, yes, you are seeing it. Uh, education is at the lowest, lowest ebb. Yes, don't just mention it. Oh, thank you for mentioning. Oga, how do we now solve it? And then you sit back and listen to him. People are hiding under zoning to cover their inadequacies. A man who does not know what our problem is, say, no, hey, well, you must zone. Hey, zoning, hey, let us zone. And when you zone, at the end of the day, Tell him, okay, sir, we agree with you, but okay, this insecurity, what solution do you have? You will discover that it's even worse than the, uh, as clueless as those who are in charge at the moment. Which means if you give it to him, it will just be one day united. Okay. Well, so let's begin to look at those who can make a difference so that at the end of the day, our country once again can begin to move forward. I recall in the later part of Jonathan's administration, I had the privilege of traveling with Okonjo Iwala to France. And we met with this president of France now. He was then the uh, minister of the economy. This Macron. Yes. And we, I had a very long interaction with him. In his office, just about four of us there. I, him, Ukonjo Iwala, and one other person. And then one other small person who was interpreting for him. He can speak English. He has lived in Nigeria, Macron. But because of their friend thing, he, he will want to the person. But, but, when, but when you give out of official distance, he speaks the English for you. The same with Ukonjo Iwala, very fluent in, 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 in French. The man told me, say, you people are very lucky in Nigeria. That your economy is growing more than any economy in Europe. In 2014 here, I'm not talking about 19 credit, you know that. 2014 here, Okoje Wala is still alive, you can ask her. At that time, we were making progress. Today, where are we? We are owing like no man business. Apart from the fact that they were owing, the same people who are plunging us through the debt are printing posters they want to take over. So that they steal more and continue to plunge us into debt. Okay, I think this is where we leave our discussion tonight. Well, we have said it all. Uh, the media needs to do more, change the narrative, and stay away from all the issues of zoning. Who can fix Nigeria should be our narrative now. Uh, well, I will not just end the program just this way, but we'll need to just take a short break. Let's bring you one of the interviews we had with um, uh, Nigerian women, a lawyer and a politician. I think that was on Friday. We need to go back, revisit that interview, and listen to what the women has to say. And this time, they are saying it is time for government to implement the judgment of the 35 percent affirmative action uh, we'll bring you that and then when we return we'll see a good one but well, that's the much we can take on this program tonight we were on the streets of abuja precisely where you have the international conference center and that's exactly the place where this interview was held and we didn't just hold the interview just the two of us we had even termites roving around us that's to tell you that it's a natural, serene environment. 
and uh, this is the much we can take on the program tonight and until we return tomorrow at 7 p.m keep a date with us and follow me on my twitter handle at eg for seven good night thanks for checking out symphony on youtube please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates